In the state's Democratic primary for governor, the race has narrowed down to two candidates in the five-person race, former Representative Joe Cunningham and State Senator Mia McLeod, who's the first black woman ever to run for governor of South Carolina. You see her uh, behind by 27%. 57% Joe Cunningham right now, Mia McLeod with 30%, almost half of the expected votes reporting so far. Moving into the race for a seat in the state's sixth district, Representative James Clyburn is a majority whip and the third ranking Democrat in the House. And as many know, he was credited with saving President Biden's campaign by a lot of people in 2020 by helping him to win in South Carolina. Jim Clyburn having an easy time tonight. 78% of the expected vote reporting so far he has nearly 90 percent already uh, viewed as the winner there to now and we are joined by him at this point one of the most influential Democrats in Congress and in the state of South Carolina Democratic whip Congressman James Clyburn kind enough to join us tonight well congratulations looks like you've already uh, been able to bring out the the, the champagne and, and do some toasting tonight you've of course served in the house since 1993 you're now seeking your 16th term which seems pretty clear. As you know, though, several of your fellow Democrats have chosen not to run for re-election this year with such a razor thin majority already. Just how difficult will it be for Democrats to, to hold on to the House come November? Well, thank you very much for having me. It's going to be very difficult. No question about that. We're in an environment uh, that uh, sort of uh, got people a little bit confused about where we're going. You've got a president uh, that was elected, uh, turning out an incumbent, yet uh, the kind of things that he campaigned upon and people expected to happen overnight, many of those things have not happened. And the problem is that most people feel uh, that when you tell them what you're going to do, they expect for it to get done within the first few months, if not the first year. But we are uh, in a situation where uh, people are disappointed uh, because things have not happened as fast as they wanted them to happen. But this president is doing a great job. We are in a pretty good position uh, when it comes to keeping the promises that he made. A lot of things weren't expected. Nobody expected for Russia, uh, Putin, to be doing the things is currently doing. That was not expected and therefore never planned for uh, doing the campaign. We've got to factor all that in now. And there are some other things uh, with inflation uh, that in most cases uh, may be caused uh, by what's going on uh, in Russia. So we've got to uh, really uh, keep focused on what the president uh, laid out for the American people and, and not get too worried about the fact that we have not done it yet. I've been telling everybody, the glass is half full. Let's focus on what it takes. Keep filling up the glass, not spend all our time worrying about uh, the, the half empty part of the glass. So that's where we are trying to be optimistic about it all, though you did mention the confusion and disappointment uh, that many voters are feeling right now because of the inflation and rising prices, top of mind for so many voters right now. Given that Democrats do control the House, the Senate, and the White House, can you overcome being blamed for those high prices when voters go to the ballot box? Your point obviously taken about the unexpected, you know, in, uh, war that's going on in Ukraine, but do you feel that people will give that as, oh, okay, we understand, that you know, inflation and these high prices are just something that we have to deal with? Well, I will accept service on the fact that Democrats control the House. Uh, it's a very slim margin, uh, four votes, but we do control the House. We do not control the Senate. The Senate is 50-50. And they well, have but when the vice president is able to give her vote, right? I mean, then you do get that very slim margin if she, when she casts her vote. Well, there's a big difference in being able to get a 51 vote and control. When you control, sure. it means the agenda is yours. Uh, what comes to the floor 
is yours. And when you got a 10 uh, vote requirement of Republicans to bring everything to the floor, that's not control. And so I'm just not going to allow that word to go unqualified when we stop talk about what controls uh, the Senate. The Senate's got this rule, 60 votes before anything uh, in the debate can be cut off. We don't have it 50. So that is not control when you need 10 Republicans in order to cut off debate. Well, when you look at uh, control of the White House and control of the House, do you feel that uh, Americans will be forgiving uh, when it comes to the, the inflation and the, high and the high prices? Let's just say I'm hopeful that it will be forgiven. Do I expect for them to be forgiven? I'm not too sure. Mm -hmm. uh, I know I've been around this business for a long time, and we've got a lot of hard work ahead of us to convince the American people that the things we're doing are in the best interest. And I do believe with the January 6th committee uh, doing its work, that Bennett Thompson uh, has demonstrated to the American people uh, that he has what it takes to get the truth out to them. I do believe that by the time these hearings are over, we will uh, redefine exactly how we got to where we are and we'll change the narrative going forward. And let's turn to the ongoing talks in the Senate on that bipartisan framework on gun safety legislation. While it would be the first progress in decades, do you have any concern that nothing else will get done at this point as far as more substantive regulation of firearms in the future and that Republicans will then point to this deal if it passes to show, well, we did take action, look at what we did? Yes, I have concerns about that. Remember, I represent Charleston, South Carolina. The entire peninsula of Charleston is in my congressional district. That includes Emanuel AME Church, where those nine souls lost their lives. And from what I see in this framework, I do not see a closing of what I call the Charleston loophole. A young man able to get a gun and to kill nine souls. How do you prevent that from happening again? Will this framework prevent that? What I've seen thus far tells me it won't. 18 year olds killing people in Yovala, killing people in Buffalo, making themselves a gift of a weapon of war for the 18th birthday. Will this bill or this framework solve that problem? I'm not sure. So I can tell you right now, I am going to be very disappointed if the legislation developed from this framework will not cover those problems. And lastly, to the January 6th committee hearings that are now underway, we saw some back and forth from the committee today on whether their work will actually lead to a criminal referral to the Just Department of Justice on the former president's conduct surrounding January 6th. How important do you feel that that is as an end goal for this committee? Well, I think it's very important for this committee to do its work and to reveal all the facts to the American people. Now, it may be uh, that this legislative or congressional committee will not be able to bring uh, charges, uh, criminal charges. But let the Justice Department do its work as well. So what I want to see this committee do is exactly what it has been doing with these first two hearings, laying out for the American people exactly what the facts are. A lot of people are going to have their minds changed because of this. A lot of people won't, but that's not their problem. Their problem is to lay out the facts. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.